welcome back! Now it's time to adjust the face rig. First, I'll stretch the head with the topmost controller. Then I'll put the first joint of the head at the level of the eyes and the second joint just a bit beneath the nose. I'll adjust the ears. And then with this controller called Face Master STR, you can adjust the overall placement of the face. So you can also scale it to make it fit the model a bit better. Optionally, you can adjust a main controller for a hat rig. And there is also a main controller for an eyeglasses rig. This means that if you create a rig for such objects, you can parent those rigs to these two bones. I will also adjust the look controller. So now we can start with the face itself. First, I'm gonna activate the wireframe view on the model in order to see the edge loops. And then, as you can see, each part of the face has a different color, so that means that it belongs to a different bone group. So now I'll go to the armature panel and I click on the eyebrows group and then I click the select button. That will select all the bones from that group. So with Ctrl I I can invert the selection and if I press H I will hide all the selected bones. That means that only the bones from the eyebrows will be visible. By doing this you can adjust each part of the face without any visual hassle. Now I'm going to start moving the controllers aligning them the best I can to the geometry loops. Notice that there is a master controller for the brows that will let you move the whole structure at once. I will also enable the b-bone option in the armature so that I can see the actual curvature of the bones. After adjusting the main controllers I'll also adjust the vertical bones trying to keep them above the surface of the model. Notice that the deformation bones are arranged as a grid. This is a strategic technique that allows me to prevent the vertices from collapsing when the joints articulate. And that is why when we reach the weight painting chapter, we will paint both the horizontal and the vertical bones alike. This is the frown controller. And then I can select all the left controllers, copy the pose, and paste it to the right controllers. So, now I'm gonna continue with the eyes. I'll select the eyes group, which is called STR eyes. Then with Control i I can invert the selection and hide the rest of the bones. The first thing I'm gonna do with the eyes is to move the main controller, which is called iMaster STRL. This controller has to be placed at the center of the geometry of the eye. So, to do that, I'm going to locate its center, and then with Shift S, I'm going to snap the cursor to the center of the eye. Then I select the eye controller, and again with Shift S, I snap the selection to the cursor. After doing this, I can go on adjusting the eyelids controllers. And a little bit of music to cover the gap. Just as I did with the eyebrows, I'm going to adjust the vertical bones of the eyelids, again placing them above the surface of the model. Once I have finished adjusting the bones, I can select them all and copy the pose into the right controllers. So, we can now move on to the main facial controllers. The first thing I'll adjust are the violet controllers, which determine some key points of the facial structure. That is the group called STR Face Mech. The first thing I'm going to adjust is the jaw. I'm going to move the controllers called Maxi that goes for maxillar. The first controller determines the pivot point of the jaw and the second controller is placed at the chin of the character. As you can see here, we are placing the pivot point for this movement. Then I'm going to adjust the mouth stretch controllers and for that I move the controllers called mouth STR. 
the first one goes right beneath the nose and the second one goes again at the chin of the character. This controller determines this movement that the character can have. Next, I'm going to place Mouth Master STR, which determines the initial placement of the lips. And then Mouth Master IK will determine the pivot point of the mouth when we move it as a whole, as you can see here. Finally, we can place Mouth Control STR, which will determine the actual location of the controller that we're going to use in animation for moving the mouth. And we also have the Lip Up and Lip Low Lock controllers, which will determine the placement of the secondary controllers of the upper and lower lips. Next, I'll place the Tongue and Teeth controllers. So, finally, I'm going to select the group called STR Face, which are the main controllers of the face. I'm going to adjust the nose. And then, for doing the actual face, we have to start from the lips. First, I'll select the mouth corner STR controller and I'll place it at the mouth corner of the character. And next, I'm going to start placing all the different loops of the lips, trying to make them match the loops of the character. Once I've set up the loops correctly, I'll start adjusting the controllers from the outer end of the face. And you'll notice that all the middle controllers that go from the lips to the outer end will get affected by this movement. So, that's why I move the controllers from one end and the other end, and then I'll take care of the middle controllers. Just as in the other parts of the face, you can see that there are vertical bones here also. The idea is that you place all this grid above the surface of the model. Another thing that you should look after is that you have to try to make the curvature of the B-bones as smooth as you can, because B-bones tend to flip if the curvature is too sharp. This only happens when the joints rotate more than 90 degrees, so I can tell you that the facial rig is totally safe. But come on, try to make it look as good as possible. So, now that all the outer end controllers are placed, I'm going to copy the pose into the right side of the rig. And now that the lips and the outer ends are ready, I'm going to adjust the middle controllers. As I said, all this facial grid has to be placed above the surface of the model and its curvature has to be as smooth as it can be. In other words, try to adjust the facial rig as best as you can to the shape of your character and also try to make the controllers match the geometry loops of the model as best as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you should try to do it well enough. Here's just a little side note, but try to make this controller called Leap Up Master 4 STR L go through the mouth corner. So it should be placed a little bit inside of the mouth, you know, because if you place it outside of the mouth corner, the stretching of the deformation bone will give awkward results. So that deformation bone should go through the mouth corner. I will mirror the pose. Well, in general, that's about it. Try to put the controllers above the surface of the model and try to make the rig match the loops of the geometry. This is looking fine. I'll move the nostrils controllers here. 
And again, as I said earlier, each of the horizontal loops of the facial rig has a kind of master controller, which moves all the controllers at once, and the leap up and low lock violet controllers kind of define where those controllers go at first. But now I'm going to adjust manually these main controllers so that they match the horizontal loop that they are supposed to move. In this stage, you can also move some of the facial controllers, such as the cheek controller or the nose frown controller, so you can put them in place. You can also adjust that later or in edit mode, but you can do it now as well. It's up to you. So, the rig is looking good. And that's it! We are finished with the retargeting stage. I'll see you in the next tutorial that will be about baking all the work that we've done so far. Good luck! <laughs>